Welcome to A Guide to Every Deck in Modern. Today we're looking at Mono Blue Tron. Mono Blue Tron is a variant of classic Tron decks that sacrifices the speed and consistency of green cards that find lands, namely Sylvan Scrying and Ancient Stirrings, for more controlling blue cards and the ability to interact in the early game. The deck still ideally wants to assemble all three Tron lands by turn 3, but since it can't do so as reliably as Green Tron, it plays a number of blue cards that can interact on earlier turns while focusing its threats on being better on turns 4 and later. Because of this, the deck may issue Karn Liberated since it's not as good after turn 3, but it still plays Karn the Great Creator, Ugin, Wormcoil, and Walking Ballista. Typical blue cards include various counter and bounce spells that scale with more mana, namely Condescend, Repeal, and EDH All-Star Cyclonic Rift, as well as Remand and Thirst for Knowledge to draw cards. Karn the Great Creator has a number of options to wish for and can shut down various strategies with targeted hate cards. In the absence of any specific need, your best bet is usually to go for Liquid Metal Coating and start picking off lands. Warm Coil Engine is good against creature decks and burn. Walking Ballista comes down very large due to the Tron lands and can pick off small creatures. Ugin the Spirit Dragon deals with problematic board states. Because of the partially blue mana base, Blue Tron has access to a number of lands that Green Tron doesn't, notably Odawara, Talaria West, Hall of Storm Giant, and Academy Ruins, the latter of which enables all kinds of different lines in a combo known as the Slaver Lock. If you have Mind Slaver and 13 mana, including Academy Ruins, you can sacrifice Slaver to take over your opponent's turn, then put Mind Slaver back on top of your deck with Ruins and repeat next turn. Even if you can't kill them with their own cards, you can prevent them from ever interacting with you for the rest of the game. Blue Tron mulligans very well since it mainly wants to find all three Tron lands or two different ones plus Expedition map, but not as well as the more consistent Green Tron. Unlike Green Tron, however, you don't necessarily need to ship hands that lack Tron since its blue cards compensate for a lack of speed. Blue Tron can perhaps best be described as the thinking man's Tron. Its lines and cards are more complex and it's less able to stumble into turn 3 wins. It's definitely not newbie friendly and takes some time to learn. Sideboarding and how to beat it a lot of the sideboard are wish targets for Baby Karn and shouldn't be brought in except in cases where speed matters, such as Relic of Regenitus vs. Dredge. Besides that, the usual card to bring in is Negate or some other such blue card to interact with spell decks or Spatial Contortion for aggro. One way to attack Bluetron is by hitting its mana production by destroying its lands. Common hate cards are Alpine Moon, Blood Moon, and Damping Sphere, though anything that costs 3 or more may be too slow on the draw. Like with its green counterpart, these hate cards aren't actually win the game cards versus Blue Tron in the same way hate cards usually are, for example, rest in peace against Dredge. If the opponent isn't pressuring the Tron player's life total, they'll eventually naturally draw enough lands to cast their spells normally. Permanent based hate pieces can also be temporarily dealt with by Repeal or Odawara or destroyed by Blast Zone. The actual most effective way to fight Blue Tron is by permanently destroying its Tron lands with cards like Fulminator Mage. Tron is traditionally good against slower mid-range and control decks such as Jund and Bluet Control since it generates a huge mana advantage over them and can play must-answer threats backed up with counter spells. Tron is worst against fast aggro or combo decks, although it may be able to stifle them with counters and bounce. Tips and Tricks Karn retrieves cards from exile, not just your sideboard. You can use things like Relic of Progenitus to get back important cards that have been exiled. The sequence you play your Tron lands matters. You may not always have exactly all three on turn three. It's best to pay for spells and abilities with Mine and Power Plant first, so you'll have the most mana from Tower afterwards. Similarly, when attacking Tron's lands, destroy Mine and Power Plant first since it forces them to pay for things with Tower before reassembling Tron. However, if they have four or more Tron lands, destroy Tower first. If you already have a ton of mana and can search for a land with Expedition Map, it's probably more worthwhile to find something like Academy Ruins rather than more Tron lands. The way you pay for spells using the Tron lands can matter in terms of leaving yourself more options. For example, let's say you want to grab Relic of Regenitus from the sideboard with Baby Karn, but you don't want to activate Relic immediately. If you tap Mine and Plant to pay for Karn, you'll then need to tap Tower for Relic, leaving you with no mana if you pass the turn. Whereas if you tap Tower and one of the other two to pay for Karn, you can float a mana to pay for Relic and still leave a land untapped. At times, you may want to cast certain blue spells for their secondary effects. Condescend scries 2 and Reman draws a card regardless of whether the spell is countered. You can point Condescend at your own spells and pay 0 for X. Repeal draws a card and can bounce your own cheap artifacts to save them from removal or replay them. For example, Walking Ballista, Chalice, EE, etc. Academy Ruins can recycle any artifact you've been, not just Mind Slaver. This lets you loop threats against removal, deal a ton of extra damage with Walking Ballista, find more lands with map, etc. 
Thirst for Knowledge can be used to strategically discard cards, for example, Worm Coil Engine against Living End. You can also choose to discard two cards regardless of whether one of them is an artifact. Here, Living End, have two Worm Coils. If you play Ulamog or Emrakul and value the cast trigger over the body, or you're worried they're going to die to something like Solitude, you can remand them back to your hand and cast them again next turn while still getting the cast trigger. You can use Cyclonic Rift on your opponent's end step and force them to discard excess cards to hand size. I hope you've enjoyed this look at Mono Blue Tron. I want to thank my fellow players in the Magic community for whom sharing their experiences helps make these guides possible. You can find additional resources, such as an up-to-date decklist, in the description. If you think I left out anything important or got something wrong, please leave your thoughts in the comments, and stay tuned to see what deck we look at next time.